on this brand new series um, here at the blend called Give It Up. Everybody say give it up. Give it up. Everybody say give it up. I ain't talking about your money. This ain't the Proud Family. How many of you ever seen the Proud Family? All right, this has nothing to do with this message. But last night, I had my hair in like a funky kind of a way. And uh, I was sitting right in front of Miss Alicia. And uh, she, took a picture of the uh, she took a picture of me while I was on stage doing something. And then she said that my head looked like the little baby in the Proud Family with the hair covering the eyes. You don't ever seen it? And yeah, she called me out. All right, anyway. This ain't the proud feeling where I'm saying to give it up. This, what we're talking about for the rest of this month is this word that it really has a bad reputation with it. And the word is honor. Like, like sometimes we, we talk about honor. Sometimes you say honor. Sometimes you might say respect. Uh, sometimes you might say, give me what's mine. Like we, 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 we use a whole bunch of different words in order to talk about this subject of honor. Now, uh, in culture, uh, have you ever heard the phrase, oh, you got to give respect to get respect? You ever say that to somebody? If something, you, you, you had a homeboy or maybe a new cat that just came to your school, they acting all tough, and they're like, hey, man, oh, man, this is Cam is saying this was me, bro. He, he, you, you walk into a new place in school, and you're like, hey, man, why, why ain't you, where my respect at? You better put respect on my name. <laughs> it's funny. People say put respect on my name. Like, how else am I going to say it? You better put some respect on my name. They say, man, you got to give respect to get respect. That's wrong. It, it, it is, and, and, and it's not my opinion, because I, I used to think that same thing. Yo, if you're going to be tight with me, I'm going to be tight with you. We can play this both ways, however you want to do it. Let's bump. Like, I, 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 that, was my, that was my default. I went there. But I, as I've been reading and as I've been studying, I've been learning, and this is something that I'm having to work on, that you got to give respect to get respect is not what God says about respect or about honor he, he he doesn't he says you give honor because you are honorable you give honor because you honor me when I honor God in my life then honor naturally flows out from me I will naturally respect you more as a person why because I respect God and because of my respect for him I now respect you more we're going to be going into this thing of honor these next couple weeks but the first point that we got to get across is I cannot honor someone unless I first honor God. I can't honor someone unless I first honor God. I, I might be nice to you. I, I might be nice to you, but, but there's more that goes into honor than just being nice. There, there, there's more that goes into honor than just giving somebody a compliment. It's a lot deeper than that. And so I can't truly honor you properly unless I'm first giving honor to God and who he is in my life, who he's been in my family's life, who he's been all throughout history. The Bible talks a lot about honor, but we might not fully understand it. You see, to honor somebody is to hold someone to a real high level. Like, you, you, you might see your favorite celebrity walk in the room, your favorite TikTok influencer, your favorite athlete, whoever it is. You see them walk in the room, man, you'll be lined up just to go get an autograph or just to take a picture with them or to do whatever. How, how many of y'all have ever waited in line to see somebody to do something? You ever done that? Okay, okay. That, that, that sounds like a back-in-the-day thing. Man, back in the day... You, 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 used to go to the, you used to go to the music store, and you would buy somebody CD. See, that's, that's a round disc that you used to put in your car. And you used to play music. And, and there was anywhere between 8 to 16 tracks, depending on how good the artist was. If they couldn't write music, it was 8. This new J. Cole album would be 16. You feel me? Like, like, like everyone's like that. So, so as I, I remember going through, sitting at this music store, and I remember waiting for hours to get an autograph from this one cat. And I'm telling you, like, I, may, I might have spent two minutes talking with the person, but I probably was in line for two hours. Some of y'all might call it a waste of time. I, I talk with my boy, Josue, and Josue, he gets up at like five in the morning to go get Pokemon cards. Hey, you might be laughing, but my boy making money on some Pokemon cards. And so listen, so obviously he honors the Pokemon game because he's realizing, hey, there's a benefit that I get when I do this thing. When we honor something, we hold something to a value. It has value. It, 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 it's worth something to us. Now, as I was going through, when I thought of dishonor, I used to think of cussing somebody out. 
Like, I, w- I would think of, like, the draftsman. Like, dishonor would be you coming up and doing, like, what Kevin Hart said, giving me a bum bum. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like you can't touch on my face or, or stealing, ooh, stealing one of my chicken nuggets right out from under my nose. Like, that's dishonor. You feel me? But dishonor is treating something, someone as ordinary or average. Okay? So if dishonor is treating someone as average, I have to admit that I have dishonored God a lot in my life. I've treated him like average. I've treated him like the words that he said in this Bible have been another opinion that I could find on social media, but it might not have been the truth. If I'm being honest, there's been times where I might have dishonored God where he has told me not to enter into this dating relationship, but I just went ahead and did it anyway because I thought he was like my mom just trying to tell me what to do. See, we have to be careful that we don't dishonor God in our life because when we honor him, that's when we get a benefit package to it. Now, we don't like what Cam said. Cam, I loved when you said this. I'm not going to honor so that I can receive, but I honor because I'm grateful for what you have done in my life. See, we honor bosses. If you work for somebody, you might, you might honor your boss. This week is Teacher's Appreciation Week. If you haven't already, yep, Vic, shout out to you in the back, bro. Love you. Vic is a teacher in the uh, Hillsborough County School System. Shout out to you, Vic. We love you, bro. Uh, but so this week is Teacher's Appreciation Week. How can you honor your teacher? Writing them a note. And no, that don't make you a suck up. That don't make you a brown nose. That makes you someone who honors. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. We might honor our boyfriend or girlfriend. We, we put their opinion above even what we want sometimes. Uh, we, we, we might honor influencers, celebrities, star athletes. We, we do that with the whole lot of people. In our culture, God is just treated as another person, though. And, and, and that's, that's the reason why we can take prayer out of schools, because that's just another thing to do. That's not the way to live, right? No, that's, that's actually dishonor. And sometimes we don't like things to be so black and white and harsh. But I've learned in my life, if I call something how it is, life starts to get a lot better. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I don't want to sit. And like, imagine you and this girl was talking, you and this guy was talking, and y'all just stated in this we talking stage. And y'all just talking for three years. Are you going to stay? <laughs> no, nah, like, I, we, we need to clarify some things, right? Like, like what Cam said, if I'm spending $50 just to take you out, am I wasting my money? Like, like what is this thing here? We need to be able to clarify some things, and one of the things we need to clarify is how am I honoring God? Am I even honoring him? And if I'm not, how can I start to honor him properly? We have to check and see how we view God. See, our blessings from God are determined by how we view God. Honor brings about obedience. When I honor someone, I will obey them. Example, uh, I work for my dad. I honor my dad. That, that, that's my pop. Love that man to death. Anybody does anything to them, they done. Uh, that, that, like that is my cat. That, that, that's my dude. He was the best man in my wedding. My dad is my guy. One of the rules uh, for work is we have to be in the office by 9 a.m. I'm not the biggest morning person. Anybody like hit snooze like 59 times before you wake up in the morning? Yeah, me too. Um, so I'm not the biggest morning person. And it took me a while, but my dad ended up calling me out because he was like, hey, Caleb, you haven't been coming into work on time, son. What's going on? Like, this is being real disrespectful. You are not honoring me as your boss right now. And I had to take a look back and see, man, my way of honoring can also be by obeying him. So I had to check and see and pull all these different things together to figure out how I am viewing him. My viewpoint of him determined my blessing. (laughs) My blessing was my paycheck. And if I didn't obey him properly, then I would not receive the blessing of that paycheck. (laughs) Who wants a paycheck? Me too. Me too. I'm I'm trying to keep that rolling. So when it pertains to God, if we view him as the nice guy, then that's all he'll be, the nice guy. If we, view, if we view him as a healer, someone who can heal a migraine, hey, he, he could do that. If we view him as someone who can remove cancer from our body, hey, he, he can do that. If we view him as someone who can guide my decisions and my lifestyle, 
then he can do that. But he's only going to do what we think he can actually do. And that's just based on our honor towards him. John chapter 5 verse 23 says this. Whoever does not honor the son, talking about Jesus, does not honor the father who sent him. Uh, So my question is, how are we doing when it comes to honoring God? Not how are we doing when it comes to talking to him. Not how are we doing when it comes to, hey, do I pray to you right before I eat or maybe right before I go to bed? How are we doing with honoring him? Because honoring doesn't happen by chance. Honoring takes a lot more intentionality in order to make it happen. There's three things that I think that we can do uh, as far as how we can honor God better. Y'all ready for these three? These three, and then we're going to go down and we're going to have a great time. How do we honor God? Number one, we honor God with what we think. We honor God with what we think. You know, how do I think about God? We we just talked about how how am I viewing God? What what do I think that he can actually do in life? Do, Do I listen to a message? Do I raise my hand during worship? Do I clap? Some of y all offbeat. Oh, how, how do I do? And do I just think that he's just another guy in a history book uh, that happens to be different than the history book that I read in school? Is he just this guy from back in the day who did some really cool things? Uh, or is he Jesus, my Lord and Savior? Which one is he? How are we viewing him? Do I pray to him, but I don't even believe that he could do the things that I'm praying for him to do? Am I being ignorant with my prayers? Hey, God, I need you to help me with this. Listen, I might as well say a prayer because he ain't going to be able to do it anyway, so it don't really make no difference. At least I can say I tried. No, that's messed up thinking. What's the point of speaking? I'm not going to go to you and ask you for $10,000 because I know you ain't going to give it to me. Just like you're not going to come up here and ask me for $1 because you know I ain't going to give it to you. Uh Uh-huh, you'll be all right. How are we viewing God? how How do we think about him? Whenever I'm talking with him, whenever I'm praying to him, whenever, whenever I'm living my life for him, do I believe that he can actually do things or, or am I just throwing things out there? So how is it that we can honor God with our thoughts? I would say this, I, I truly believe that he's not just another guy, but he's the Messiah, he's Jesus Christ. And, you know, once we start getting our thought process on the right track, things begin to move forward in life. Um, I had to believe that I could pass ninth grade before I ever passed the ninth grade. I I had to believe it first. Then after I believed it, I I had to start working my way towards it. But if I never believed it first, it never would have happened. For those of you who are wanting to go to college, you have to believe in yourself that you can go to college. Because if you don't believe it in yourself, you're not going to put forth the proper effort in order to go there. So for Jesus, do we believe that he can actually save me from my sins? Do we believe that he can actually help us live heaven on earth? Because heaven is going to be a great place, but I don't plan on going there yet. So why do I need to believe in this Jesus? Because he said that I don't want you to just have heaven up there. I want you to have heaven right where you are. I want you to live life and life more abundantly right now. Doesn't have to wait till you're dead. You can get it now. You can get it before your parents. That's just the reality. I know some 40, 50 year olds that are living busted up. They might be going to heaven, but they're living like hell right now because they don't have the right perspective of who Jesus is. So how are we thinking of him? How are we viewing him? How we view him is going to affect the whole rest of the puzzle. I can't honor God properly unless I get the right thought process about who is he in my life. He's not a co-worker. He's not just a friend. He is your friend. He's a friend that sticks closer than your brother, but he's so much more. He's not limited in that one space. He wants to be so much more, but we have to think that he can be in order for him to allow. He's a gentleman. He's not going to barge his way in. How do we think about him? That's what he'll do. So number one, we honor God with what we think. Number two, We honor God with what we say. Words matter. Words matter. The Bible says that there is life and death and the power of the tongue. Words matter. You know, it was because of my words that I was able to go on a date with Liz. I had to ask her. It don't mean nothing if I kept it up here. 
Thinking that I wanted to go on a date with her was great. That was the first step. But now I had to start doing something. I had to start saying something. Otherwise, she can't read my head. It's scary in here. Don't nobody want to read my mind. It, it takes the next step. So, hey, number one, how do we honor God? Okay, we, we get the right thought process on him. But now after that thought process, there's another step. The, you went from ninth grade, now there's 10th grade, right? There, there's another step. There's another level to this stuff. There's another level. We got to start speaking. How are we talking about Jesus, how we talk about God. See, we talk about the things that we're interested in, right? Uh, how, how many of you uh, like sports and talk about sports? Okay. How, how many of you like fashion? You talk about fashion. Okay, okay. How many of you like social media and funny videos? So you're talking about like TikTok and Instagram and all that. Oh, uh, okay, cool. See, we, we talk about what we enjoy, right? Like, example, I go back to my boy, Josue. He, he was telling me a little bit about some of the Pokemon cards, and I talked to him probably for a good, like, two minutes. And then after that, I was tapped out because it just don't interest me. That, that's just not my thing. Some of y'all sneakerheads, so you just like to talk about sneakers 24-7. Yo, that's real smooth, but I can't talk about sneakers 24-7. I know enough to get me in trouble, not to keep me moving. And so we, we talk about what we're interested in. Do you talk about Jesus? If we talk about what we're interested in, then I wonder, am I interested enough in him to talk about him? How, 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 do, how do I express to people who Jesus is? And this is more than just saying, like what the series that we did with Viral Jesus, when it comes to sharing who Jesus is. This is just about, can I allow Jesus to be a part of my daily conversation without it being weird and awkward? Yeah. Like, hey, I could talk football with you all day long. And then I could talk about Jesus and then bump right back to football and I didn't skip a beat. Yeah. And it's not, I'm not looking at you like, okay, so I'm going to bring up Jesus now. <laughs> no, you ain't got to be weird about it. I get, the, I get the honor and the privilege to go to Lakeland Christian every Tuesday and to Lake Gibson every Wednesday and to talk with the sports, with the football teams at both of those schools. And while we're there, hey, listen, I'm going to talk football to you all day long. I love football. I'm going to go Jesus real quick, and then we're going to bounce right here back to football. Why? Because they're both in my life. And for me to have Jesus in my life doesn't mean that I can't have fun. It doesn't mean that I can't have hobbies. It doesn't mean that I can't have other interests. He wants to be a part of our life. Yeah. So how are we talking about him? You see, the more we talk about Jesus, the more we will grow to honor him. You know, they say whenever you're, whenever you're in a dating relationship or whenever you get married, they say one of the best ways to keep your mindset focused on that one person and not on that person you see on Instagram or not on that person, that, that new person that just came to school, is by talking about your significant other in a good way. Not gossiping about them, but talking about them in a good way. Man, I, I, I talk about Liz to my boys all the time. It's not that I'm trying to convince myself that I love her. It's not that I'm trying to convince them how great she is. I just want her to stay on my mind. And the more she's on my mind, the more I will honor her. So now the decisions that I make will honor her. The places that I won't go are to honor her. The things that I don't say to other women are to honor her. The, the way that my eyes don't look at some women are to, or at women is to honor her. Who we talk to, who we look at, it shows, it shows honor. So how are we talking about Jesus? He wants to be talked about. Yeah. He wants you to bring up his name. When you're dealing with something, can you say, hey, I need Jesus' help with this? And not, it didn't not be a joke? Can you say, hey, Josiah, do you, do you mind praying for me real quick? Because I'm having a hard time. Without it being anything weird, the more we talk about him, the easier it'll be. But it takes us taking that step. Once we get the right perspective and the thought of Jesus is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the Messiah. He's the guy that saved me from tearing my life up on my own. Once we get that, then I can start talking about him saying, man, Jesus is good. God, I'm so grateful. I don't pray before I eat just because my mom and daddy told me to when I was a little kid. I pray before I eat because I'm understanding that God has blessed me with the ability to go eat Chipotle today and be able to get extra guac. <laughs> I, I pray, listen, and as funny and as, and as humorous as I, I, like I'm trying to make that, like <laughs> I'm also being real because I remember what it was like not being able to buy Chipotle. 
I mean, I'm just being real. Like, I, I, I remember what it was like. So, so why not just give thanks for what, for what I have been able to do? When we talk about Jesus more, it's going to put him more in our mind, which is going to help us honor him in the decisions that we make. So number one was we got to honor God with what we think. Number two, we got to honor him with what we say. And number three is we got to honor God with what we do. So it starts here in our head. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So it starts right here. Once my head gets right and I get the right viewpoint of who he is, bet. I'm going to start talking about him differently. And because I'm talking about him, it's going to make my actions change and look a little bit different. Some of my boys might come up to me if they knew me back whenever I was at my first university. They might say, hey, Caleb, you doing things a little bit different. You're right. I've been trying real hard to do things a little bit different. Things should change when we're following Jesus and honoring him in that way. So I want to ask you this question. Do you honor God with your actions? Do you honor God with the words you use with your friends? Do you honor God with that private message on Snapchat? Do you honor God with all the different uh, videos and TikToks and all this and all that that go on on social media? I'm not saying you aren't. I'm just asking you if you are. I tell you, I have not honored God in all of those areas. I haven't. I'm grateful for his grace, but that doesn't mean that I can abuse it. I'm mindful that he gave me mercy, but I'm also mindful that God ain't no punk and he ain't going to be fooled, right? And so how can I make sure that my actions are changing and they're actually honoring him? Do I live the way that he said to live? Do I do the things that he said to do? In my dating relationship, do I keep the boundaries that he said to keep boundaries in? What am I doing? If I'm going to honor God, I have to honor him in what I think, what I say, and in what I do. See, I, I can't know how he told me to live, though. I can't do what he wants me to do unless I read it. He gave us this Bible for a reason. He said, I don't want you to have to do it and then mess up and then do it and then mess up time and time again. He said, that's not what this is for. I gave you this as an instruction manual. And guys, we have a hard time reading instruction manuals. Like we try to just do it ourselves. Read the instruction manual. It makes life so much easier. God said, you do it my way, you get my results. The Bible is our GPS. God's positioning system, trying to walk us through this thing of life. And if we buy into it, then he'll help navigate what road. You don't know what major to go into. You don't know what college to pick. You don't know if you should go to college or if you should take a year off. You don't know what you're going to do when it gets to high school. What friend group am I going to link with? Let's read the Bible. Listen to what the Bible says. And it's not like God is going to say, stay away from all the jocks. Be friends with the band, guys. You're going to date the first chair flute. And the girl in your second period class who's really good at drawing is going to be your best friend. Like, it, it ain't saying it like that. But what you do is you find out when I start lining my life up with God, I start seeing how other people li live their life. And I'm not saying that I'm better you or worse than you, but this is what I'm trying to do. So I want people who are trying to do the same thing that I'm doing in my life to help me keep going and pushing forward. And again, honor brings obedience. So when I'm truly honoring God in my thoughts, then what I say, then what I do, I will be obeying what God said. And when we obey God, the speed of our obedience determines the speed of our advance in life. You want to hit the next level of life? Start obeying God faster. You want to start hearing from God more quicker? Start obeying God faster. You want to know what that next step, that next direction is in life? Start obeying God and he will begin to give you that at a much faster rate. Everybody stand to your feet. In the book of Joshua, in the book of Joshua, or Joshua, there's this story of uh, Jericho. Have you ever heard of that story before? Jericho. So, so basically, um, God told God told the Israelites. He told Joshua, "Hey, you guys are supposed to take over Jericho, and this is how you're going to do it. Not not by army, not by fighting, not by doing any of that. This is what you're going to do." You're going to march around the entire city for six days, one time per day, and you ain't going to say nothing. 
Now, their army might be up top on the wall of Jericho. They might be throwing things. They might be saying things. They might be cussing you out. But you can't say nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't, don't wave hi to them with one finger. Don't do none of that. Like, I didn't need you to, like, shut up and walk. That, that's what God basically said. And so they did. And then God said, on the seventh day, what I need you to do is I need you to walk around seven times. And then on that seventh time, after you get done, I need the trumpets to blow, and then I need you to shout, and then let me do what I do. Now, when I read that, I genuinely have a hard time with it. Because you're going to tell me we're going to defeat a city that we should be fighting by walking and not touching them. They had to have in their mind the right viewpoint of who is God. If God is telling me to do this, then he must know something that I don't know. So his opinion is not that of another man. He's God. If he created me, he could tear that wall down. And so, okay, number one, I had to do what God said. And then all the leaders that were in that group of the Israelites, they had to start speaking that to other people. Hey, I know this sounds crazy, but I just need you to trust me and do this. Hey, I know it doesn't make any sense. I don't get it either. But we need to just stay locked into what who God is. God has brought us this far. Why won't he do it now? They had to start speaking about it. And then they had to actually start doing it. They actually had to start walking around. And what I love is that the Bible says on the seventh time after they got done, the trumpets had to sound and they had to shout as if the walls had already came down and they were still standing. Why did God do that? I would dare to say, I mean, I haven't called him, but like I would dare to say God did that to see how much do you honor me? If you honor me and doing everything that I said that, that I told you to do, then you truly do believe that I could give you this city. You truly do believe that I can help you conquer a city without even having to fight it. We, we just got done singing, this is how I fight my battles. Imagine what would happen if we would fight our battles by listening to Jesus and how much further life would go. They didn't, they didn't even have to fight, and they were able to live off of land that other people worked for. There's some battles that you might be fighting right now that you don't have to. You're fighting because you're doing it your way. I've been there. I've done it. I've fought things. I've wrestled. I've lost sleep at night because I'm trying to do things my way rather than God's way. And if I only listened to God, it would happen faster and it would be so much easier just if I listened to him, if I honored God. They honored God by believing in their thoughts. They didn't understand, but they believed him. They honored him by not talking back to him, not talking and gossiping about him to their boys. They honored God by obeying him. And because of how they honored God, God did things that doesn't make any sense. He gave them a blessing that they couldn't have gotten on their own. He gave them a fast pass to the Jericho ride where they were able to live for forever and ever. And so when we honor God, it has to do with what we think, what we say, and what we do. Jesus, we love you. I pray that you help all of us start to honor you better, that as we go through this thing of life, that, God, we think about you in a better way, that we don't limit you, that we don't undermine what you can do, but, God, we elevate you as God of our life. You're not just another human being. You're someone that wants to relate with us, someone that had the power to create all of us in this world. God, so help us with what we think. Help us with what we say, that it might not make sense, but I will do it just because you said to do it. I'll do it now, and I'll understand it later. Help us be more bold in talking about you. Help us that as we begin to talk about you, become easier and easier. Put people in our life that we can start talking about you, that they won't think of us as weird, but they will think of us as real. And then, God, as we begin to obey you with our actions, God, I pray that you begin to open up the doors of blessing into all of our lives, like those things that these students are praying for, those things that these leaders are praying for, but they haven't even spoken out loud. I pray that you go meet those needs and you go enhance those areas in ways that only you can do. And just like what you did in Jericho, Father God, I thank you that when we buy into you and when we honor you in the rightful way, you will give us things that we never could have gotten on our own, and it had to be because of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.